Welcome to another episode of What Are You Selling with me, David Green. And joining me today, I am delighted to introduce you to Bella Wright, author of 10, 10 books, I believe. That's what, it says yes, on, that's what it says on Twitter anyway, unless Twitter is wrong. Uh, and you're the first author that I've had on that is quite a big gamer. And mm. there's quite a lot of uh, lit RPG stuff, so I'm really excited to talk to you. So how are you doing today? Doing very well. Um, how, how is yourself? How are you doing as well? Good. Well, I'm in the middle of a storm, but we're all okay. <laughs> right. Yeah, I've, I've heard yeah. vague stuff. I don't keep up with the news as much as I should, but I've heard vague stuff about this storm. It's supposed to be like a really big storm, right? Yeah, it's, pre- it's pretty big. We, we, had a, yeah. we had a blackout earlier today, um, which was exciting because it doesn't really happen very often. Um, yeah. It was also one of those things that I have a young son and it's like, what should we do? <laughs> <laughs> man uh yeah yeah well no it's good you guys doing like uh you got you, so you you guys still have power though it's it's back now yeah it, it okay. was gone all all morning uh but we we, oh, know, we we figured we figured it all out we were we were fine we, we were good we got there you um, went old school with the with the candles and things thankfully not yet <laughs> yeah yeah I've, yeah I've been there i've been there before yeah uh recently a couple couple years back actually yeah yeah yeah, that's um. I, I've not had to do that since the eighties or nineties, I think. But um, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's 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 always fun. Um, but it's the time of year for it, I suppose. So that's the that's the way to look at it. So um, you're the writer of, of ten books, and you uh, dabble in quite a lot of new fantasy. I would say that that a lot of people would call it, you know, lit RPG, urban fantasy um how did you get into all that all that kind of the, the, the slight side of the genre um well fantasy itself wasn't something that really appealed to me because i grew up a kid in the 90s and most of that stuff was like most of that stuff was sort of urban fantasy when you really look at it um mm-hmm. a lot of stuff we grew up on like uh, a lot of the anime we grew up on was like you know had like this urban fantasy vibe a lot of the tv shows cartoons the shows you know like stuff like Charmed and like Supernatural was like really big when I was coming up. Buffy, stuff like that was really big when I was coming up. So it's just kind of it was pretty natural. And um, I've just been, you know, working on stuff like that ever since. Like I've never been interested in like the high fantasy part of it, you know, like the orcs and goblins and rolling green fields and, you know, all that stuff. But uh, the urban fantasy part of it, you know, that that really that really uh, spoke to me coming up. Interesting that you mentioned supernatural. Um, I completely missed the boat on this thing, right? <laughs> and, uh, yeah. I have an urban fantasy series, and a lot of uh, people were like, you know, it, it's like it, if you like supernatural, you'll like this to, to other people. And I was like, and I knew what supernatural was yeah. when it was ending. I, I just came across it when it was finishing. So um, mm. I started watching it recently, and I'm up to season five, and I was like, no, I'm about, I've got another. 250 episodes left of this to go this is and I'm yeah. um but it's, it's good though I, I really like yeah. it were you watching it from the start were you did you follow it all the way through um i only say supernatural i didn't really watch it either like i kind of uh caught bits and pieces of it i, I more so watched charm and even that it was never because you know syndicated tv comes on really weird here in uh here in the u.s like you know you get like uh you get like reruns like it gets to a point and then they kind of reset and you get reruns and stuff like that so often i would just catch reruns of charm and just you know and stuff like buffy uh but like you know a lot of a lot of my earlier work was compared to like supernatural or charmed and buffy because it was very much so uh demon hunters fighting demons that sort of thing right yeah so you've mentioned before uh anime that the did you did you enjoy anime were you into that kind of stuff as well Big time, big time. Um, I think the earliest animes I watched were like, uh, you know, we we had stuff here uh, that we didn't even know were anime because we were so ignorant about anime way back when, like Speed Racer, you know, just part of culture. Yeah. Um, But it was like, you know, once like Dragon Ball and Pokemon and stuff like that came around and Toonami here in the U.S. was like really big with me because I was, uh, you know, early preteen when that came out and stuff like Dragon Ball and Gundam and Yu Yu Hakusho and Sailor Moon, all that stuff. You know that really, I just absorbed all that stuff, man. Right, right. And um, like Attack on Titan, and, and did you ever watch that? I'm a I'm a bit of a curmudgeon 
uh, the new stuff, I could, even though that's been out for probably, you know, maybe almost a decade at this point, to me, that's still like a new anime. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I'm still stuck in the Toonami era around about 2012 until like 2010. That's kind of my era of anime. Right, right, so. right, right. I'm I'm like that with music. I'm like anything that came out after like 2005. I'm like it's 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 still new. Uh, yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Like, this album is 20 years old. It's like it's hey, a new <laughs> album. All right. It's... <laughs> I'm like that with everything. Like I, like I told you, I don't pay attention to like the news, but I also don't pay attention to pop culture that much, unless it's something that really catches my interest. But for the most part, I'm pretty much stuck in like. I think I think 2015 is like the latest I'll go with most most things. To be honest. Probably, probably for the best it's the world has been pretty crap since 2015 so you know yeah not, not <laughs> it's hard to keep up with everything too man it's like every day it's like new stuff it's like it's always new stuff it's new stuff all the time nothing wrong with that but for my sanity i can't keep up with everything yeah exactly yeah exactly one thing that you are into and, and again i saw some of the things that you, you like like borderlands too i think you mentioned that you're oh, i love uh, it you, you, you're big into game and it what kind of um what what are you into when it comes to that um so uh you know i guess i guess some of my favorites would be like borderlands 2 uh like the max Payne series really good metal gear really good one um tomb raider games uh rpg as far as rpgs go you know you can never go wrong with like a shin Megami tensei sort of game um uh one of my favorite game series of all time um, I don't know if you've heard of this one. It's called Legacy of Cain. Yes. Uh, so you've heard of it? Soul Reaver. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, those games are brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Um, as far as the writing goes, like, absolutely love them. They inspire quite a bit of my writing. So I try to plug them wherever I go. Right. Yeah. It's one of those series that you, every so often you, you, th- you hear someone saying, it's coming back. There's going to be a new one. And then it yeah. never happens. And you're like, why does no one make a new Legacy of Kane game? Because they were they were great. I know the same story was great as well. I think it's just hard because uh, unfortunately, the, a lot of the voice actors were, you know, they were a bit older. So a lot of them have passed away, unfortunately. Right. And what the way the story is, you can either continue it, which is which will be very difficult because it's very, it's a big old knot of mysteries and right. time travel and all that stuff. So the original author isn't working on it anymore either. Um, Amy Hennick um and there there's a lot of history with that too she isn't exactly the original author but soul river or or legacy can as we know it is her baby she came in on the second game and just really changed that whole story right. around so she's working on like um i don't i don't think she's still doing uncharted games but um i think she's with ea now if i'm not mistaken but she isn't working on it now and without her and without the original people who worked on it it's very tough to continue because i think the fans would the fans have shown that they will reject something that doesn't feel like it's in the same vein. Right. So uh, it's just tough. And if you reboot it, you know, that's a whole other can of worms. I wouldn't mind if they rebooted it, to be honest, because it'd be hard to continue working on it. But it's, it's one of those things where it's a lot of cooks in the kitchen. Like a lot of people have a lot of opinions on what the series should do. And, you know, they don't even know if it'll be financially viable, that sort of thing. So, sure. yeah, sure. Yeah. Well, we can we can hope. And we'll see when we're, when we're old and gray, or in my case, yes. older and gray. We'll see if there's another one. Um, so we, we, we've, we've discussed your influences and, and you know, video games, anime, um, urban fantasy properties. How did you get into writing? Um, writing was something that uh, mainly it was through school. Uh, through school, we had various creative writing projects. I remember back in like, sixth grade we had to write like a little story and i took it very seriously and i wrote um the very start of a novel um about the first seven or eight chapters of a novel and um i had printed it out and made cover for it and all that and you know i still have that story to this day and i plan on going back to it once i feel like my writing skills have you know gotten me to a place where i can give that story justice um, but that started it. And then um, later on, I, I, I was in like high school. And I had a creative writing class. Uh, before that, actually, um, I had moved in with my brother. I was about 15. And um, he had challenged me to work on a few projects during the summer when I moved in with him. And one of them was like writing a story. And then um, he looked at it, he saw it, and he, he praised me. He was like, this is really good, you know, and that 
you know, that put like idea, like a kernel of an idea in my head, like maybe I can do more of this. And then um, in high school, uh, I had a really good creative writing teacher. She gave us an assignment where she gave us a random picture and, um, you know, the picture would just have something, uh, just a random scene on it. One of the pictures I remember was like a, a guy dunking on another guy um, in a basketball game. And so we just take a picture and we come up with like a whole description. So, you know, if with that picture, you probably see like people in the audience. So you probably zoom in, you either tell a story about the basketball player or you zoom in on somebody in the audience and tell a story about them. And it was just like that. You pick out um, like 10 details about the picture. You use those in your story and you could you craft like a page or two or, or however much you want. She gave you the whole hour to write a creative story based on what you see in this picture and those details you put down. Pretty much that's that that started from there. I, I had the confidence to actually like go. I can I can make a novel. And from there, I actually wrote one um, maybe. Because I had that class in like 2006 and by two years later, I had actually written like an entire novel. For the first time oh yeah very, very young <laughs> very young very and young is, yeah is that published is it something that other people can read now that that one um it was published at a certain point i did publish right. it on wattpad um but i'm going i have a lot of ideas with that one um and i don't know if i want to publish that one under my pen name because that's like that's like the magnum opus so i want that to be like absolutely perfect so i published it then i took it down and now I'm like, you know, uh, I'm working on other stuff till I build up the, the skill needed to uh, to work on that. That's what that's what a lot of authors do. Like one of um one of my favorite authors is Brandon Sanderson, who is like you know high fantasy and, and that kind of stuff. And he had a uh, his um big series that he has now, the Starlight Archive. He wrote the first book of that first before he wrote anything else, and then was like. I've not done a good enough job of this. It's it's too much for me at the moment. So he yeah. went up and did Mistborn and other things. And then he finished the Wheel of Time series. And then he was like, right, I'm ready to go back and do this now. And it's mm -hmm. the, probably the biggest high fantasy seri um, series there is now. Um, so there's no um, there's no uh, shame in doing that. And so I'll say, you know what? I have this idea. I'm going to do this in five years time. Mm -hmm. That's how I feel about it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, that's great. And it's great to actually have that um, awareness in yourself that it's like, you know what, I, I will deal with this in another uh, in another, <laughs> another point. Yeah, it, that one's that one's far too epic for uh for my current brain. So hopefully, hopefully, like you say, in like five years, I my brain will have expanded and allow me to actually <laughs> write that story. Yeah, yeah I mean, it does. I, I was talking to a, another writer recently, and. Um, and he was saying, I wish that I'd started doing this when I was younger. And he's not like old or anything. He's around the same age as me, like late 30s or, or whatever. And I was like, well, I, you know, I look at it this way. I, I'm, I'm okay now at writing. But if I'd started 20 years ago, I would have been terrible. Probably mm. would not have kept doing it. Um, so it's probably, you know, you, you get to it when you're ready to do it. I think so. I, I believe that. Yeah. So your first public, your first work that's available that is published, which one was that one? So um, the first work I've ever published was a little story called Average Joe and the Extraordinaires. Mm -hmm. uh, none of the stuff I published is currently available because um, I did decide to uh, to relaunch uh, one of my, one of my more popular books because um, my story as an indie author has been one of uh many hiatuses uh unfortunately within like the last couple of years it's been like you know little hiatus and a big hiatus so i've taken a, a big break from the uh the industry to focus on like personal life and stuff like that so um i thought it would be best to just reset you know reset and then to refocus that sort of thing but um originally yes the first book i had published was uh, a story called average joe average joe and the extraordinaires in um december 2014 and then you have the Hell's Glitch series as well, which is probably yes. the one that people would know you most for is, is Hell's Glitch. Correct. Yep. Yeah. So what's so what is the plan? Then? So obviously you've you've taken the hiatus and, and and you know, again, it's been a difficult few years for, for people and it, it makes sense. Yeah. So you've pulled everything and, and you're relaunching things. So what is it you're going to be mm -hmm. launching with first? So um as you said, it's uh, Hell's Glitch. Uh, that was one of my more popular series. That was the one that sold pretty well when it came out. So um, with that one, 
uh, I just want to relaunch it, refocus, because uh, I wasn't able to do the things with it that I wanted to do originally. Right. Um, for instance, uh, I had the, the second book ended up being three books and I did something that I didn't want to do. I ended up splitting a book in two because I just wanted to um, I wanted to have I wanted to because it was so huge. It was a big story. And so I had wanted to publish uh, publish something at a certain time. And so, you know, not to keep people away, because I knew the second half of that story was going to take, you know, a, a much longer amount of time to finish. So I was just like, OK, this is a perfect time to end the story. So let me just in, cut it here and then publish it. And that's something I never wanted to do. So um, this time around, uh, that story is complete is complete in its second part, second act of that uh, story. So I'm able to do that because I'm taking my time and I'm focusing on, you know, making the story like I want to make it. But I, the first book, um, I, is it going to be, have you gone back to that and kind of looked at it and, and rewritten sections of it? And Yes, yeah. 100%, 100%. I've added a, a big prologue to it, which sets up the big mystery of the series. Uh, yeah. So that's going to really add quite a bit to it. And not just that, but I've gone through, and like you said, I've uh, I've rewritten parts of the story. Um, I've uh, taken out you know certain scenes that I didn't think were very strong. And, um, you know, just add it to other scenes like that. So it's uh, it, it is it is uh, quite a bit longer than it was before. And I think it's an overall better read because I did go through line by line and um, meticulously went through to make sure that everything sounded well. Nothing was out of place and everything was, you know, the continuity in it was, you know, 100 percent. How did you find that process? I, I've done something similar to that where I've gone back to. Um, the first thing that I ever had published was a it was, a, it was novelette sized, and the mm -hmm. series that it was from when I was working on the sequel it, it changed to a different publisher and so because it was changing publisher we um, decided to go back to that first novelette and kind of expand it and rewrite it and 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 you know smooth out the transition between book one and two and I, I found it quite fun mm -hmm. despite that I was cringing half the time at what i've previously written <laughs> yeah is, is that how is that is that how you were feeling when you were writing this when you were rewriting yeah yeah sometimes because uh i'm a little bit of both a discovery writer and a planner so uh the first any i look at all my books and the way they start is very rough because you i don't exactly know i know the ideas i want in the book i know the plot but i don't know the feel of the book i don't know the soul of the book just yet until you get to like the middle of it and so um yeah once you re once you go back and rewrite it then it's like okay or you go back you reread it, it's like okay i can definitely feel a different author's hands on this first part it almost feels like a different author because it's like once you hit that middle part you hit your stride and you find your voice and you're trying to find that like at the beginning of the story so I find that going back and um, and I might just start doing this. I think I will start doing this like um, before I release something, I will just uh, sit on it because I know um, a lot of authors just sit on it for a while. I don't I don't do that enough and then go back and uh, be more willing to uh, rewrite stuff because that's something I never like to do is like rewrite stuff because I'm like once I'm completing it, I'm like, OK, this is probably the best I can do. I don't know why I used to feel that way, but I did. But now I don't because now I clearly can see like, yeah, if you give it some time and go back to it, um, cooler heads will prevail and you'll, you know, you'll, you'll do much better with it. Yeah, it, it, it depends on, on what works for you, isn't it? Because, I mean, I, I agree with you in that. I do think that a little bit of space is, is good um, to go back to or have like a beta reader and a series of beta readers to come in and look at it and kind of, and, and that gives you that space as well. But you, you know, you have people like Stephen King and his on writing book where he's like, spend three months on that one book and that's it. That's from yeah. writing it, editing it and that's it and then just move on because yeah. he's like, you know, you're in that headspace. So it, it depends kind of, kind of what works, but I, I agree with you. I do the same. So book one of uh, Hell's Glitch, um, it's coming back out on the 25th of May. Yes, uh, that'll be the six year anniversary of the initial release of it. Excellent. New cover. New cover looks great, by the way. Thank uh, you. The, the slogan as well. I really like it, how it really pops out and stands out uh, for the title. Mm. Hell's Glitch looks great. Um, mm. Tell us a little bit about the story. The story, um, I was I was thinking of like uh, snappy ways to describe it because uh, there's a lot going on with it. But I would say um, the story is like 
uh, a dark fantasy version of the matrix. Uh, there's, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of diving into virtual worlds and, um, the conception of it is, uh, the conception of it is, uh, the, vir this virtual world, um, is, is this a virtual world of dreams? Is it a virtual world of, you know, virtual data? Is it a virtual world of souls? You know, all that stuff is like kind of mingling, you know, and it's, you know, it's very conceptual in that way. Um, but everything under that, like the, the, the story in general is the story of a, of a player who's trapped in a game. And he's trying to get out of it. Um, it's a player who can actually die in this video game. Um, so everything's out of his control. Um, he has to play by the rules of the game to eventually escape it. So um, there's a lot more going into it than that. Um, I don't want to spoil anything, but I guess I guess we could start with the prologue. So the prologue uh, starts and it reveals that, um, and this is the new prologue, by the way, it reveals that uh, demons actually exist in this world. That was something that I didn't show in the first book, but now I'm going to just go ahead and give that away in the prologue. So uh, so now we know that demons exist in this world and we're going to see how that interferes with this uh, project that this character Sam is trapped in. And we also have a character named Fulton Milner, who is this uh, big time game designer who set up all this stuff. He came up with this game design technology, which uses your lucid dreaming to actually um, uh, affect how you you know what you see and stuff like that so it, it dives into their dreams so there's there's you know you know with dreams you know how dreams affect people like dreams affect people in a huge way so i'm playing around with stuff like that with you know um lucid dreaming and stuff like that um and we don't know exactly what milliner's aims are he's like this big uh enigmatic figure who's uh doing all this you know crazy stuff he he looks to be like you know setting all these players up to to have a really hard time in this game so uh that's uh that's about the gist of it um that's the setup for it um i don't want to say too much because i think yeah. um there's there's a lot of twists and turns in it that i think people would enjoy yeah excellent. I, I, you know what? i'm gonna pre-order it right now because it sounds like something that i would really like so appreciate it appreciate um, it. yeah so i'm, I'm <laughs> definitely you. gonna check that out um I, I like how you're very upfront in the prologue as well because that's in my urban fantasy series, I start the first chapter is describing the main character being killed. If she gets shot dead in the first line, but it's like just get it out there. It's there, yeah. it's gone, right? Because as well, when you're talking about it, it's kind of like, well, if you're revealing that, then what else mm. is in this book? <laughs> Dude, that's a damn good hook, though. That's a really good hook. <laughs> it's oh, like, yeah, what doing. <laughs> damn, what happened to this character? <laughs> well. You have to read to find out. Well, that sounds great. Uh, I, I like uh, I like the mix of you know uh, technology and, and demons and dreaming and stuff like. That. It sounds really really intriguing. So it's out on twenty fifth of May. Um, what's next for you after that? Uh, after that is a um, big time focus on that particular series. Um, we're gonna have um, book two after that. We're I'm working on an audio book too, and I have a really popular um, uh, narrator who's who's doing it. Um, I'm going to reveal that soon on my Patreon, like who the narrator is uh, right now, uh, right when we, right when you called me actually, or uh, right when the, uh, my, um, reminder came up about the interview I was working on, I was listening to it, um, the audio version and I was, I'm only like, uh, maybe two thirds of the way through it, but yeah, big time audio book release for the series. So I'm really excited about that. It sounds really good. So, um, I don't know if I can, I think. I still got to pick a date, so I don't even know which date I'm going to pick for the audio book, but uh, I don't know. I'm thinking the day of, the same day that the ebook releases, but, um, you know, don't quote me on that. I'm still trying to figure it out, but yeah, super excited about the audio book, um, and I do have other plans for uh, free content as well for a lot of the uh, lesser platforms. Let, I'm not going to call them lesser platforms. That's stupid. Uh, stuff like Wattpad, uh, uh, Railroad, uh, Dream, um, the stuff I can't get paid for. That's why in my head it's like lesser platforms. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but no, they're, they're, they're dope platforms because Wattpad has actually brought like a lot of um, attention to Halo's Lich, which I appreciate. Um, I, I normally update, um, upload my uh, uh, rough drafts to Wattpad and people have really taken a, a liking to them. And uh, Wattpad's not like a big place for lit RPGs either. So I'm, I'm really um, grateful for that. 
So yeah, I'll be having like a lot of um like side character NPC content from the Hell's Glitch series in there. Um, and a lot of a lot of side stories as well from Hell's Glitch on Wattpad, um, as well as my other story, um, Side Hunters. I'm gonna dive back into that as well. So, great stuff. So a full a full year ahead of you then. Full year, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Excellent. Excellent. Well, very best of luck with that, and we'll have to chat again uh, towards the end of the year and see how it's all gone. Um, Thank you. And we can talk more about the book then after I've read it as well, which would be great. I'm, I'm really looking forward to this. You've 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 so you're on what are you selling? Then oh, wow. you've definitely <laughs> sold me. So um, <laughs> appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and for um, and for everyone who's watching on YouTube or listening to us on on whatever podcast channel to listen on, where are the where's the best places to find you on the internet? um typically twitter uh i do apologize i'm not a very good social media guy um mm -hmm. but I, I post very frequently to youtube uh youtube uh i do have a facebook page but that's also kind of inconsistent i have an instagram too but if you want to find me um it'll be it'll be uh instagram uh sorry the best places are twitter youtube and the patreon i'm sorry so Stuff. or um or, or the uh mail list I'm, I'm gonna be posting the email list as well um so Brilliant. great stuff and for everyone who is uh watching or listening check out the show notes the links uh, to bell arts places to find them will be in there below so do check those out give them a click check out the work pre-order the book it's coming out very soon uh i'll maybe wait for the audio book because it sounds like it's going to be great uh bella thanks very much for coming on it's been a pleasure talking to you today and uh very best of luck for the rest of the year you as well. I told you this would go fast. It was fun. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate you, man. next time. Uh, for everyone who's listening and watching us, until next time, thanks very much. Take care. Um...